Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Carolina Weather Group. We're happy to have you this evening. Welcome to uh, another episode. And tonight's going to be a fun episode. I'm going to go ahead and apologize. I hope I don't talk too much because we're combining weather and sports. And when we do that, it really makes me happy. Uh, tonight we have on with us Sean Bratton and Mike Ventrisi from the Fantasy Football Weather Guys. And if you play fantasy football, you may have never thought about the weather element to it. So tonight, we're going to talk a little bit about that. We're going to talk about the product and how you can follow along throughout the year so your fantasy football team is up uh, up to par and uh, potentially beating the rest of your people who are not thinking about the weather. So uh, we're happy to have Sean and Mike on with us tonight. And uh, guys, we appreciate your time. We'll go ahead into the conversation since uh, – both of you guys are first-time guests with us. We always start off our questions like this. We want to know how you got uh, kind of caught up into the weather bug, the weather story. So, Mike, what is your weather story? And then we'll let Sean tell his weather story. Hey, so thanks so much for having us, guys. Um, and, uh, you know, this question always comes up, and it always starts off with – it's usually always the same answer, right? It's some kind of high-impactful weather event that has just kind of brought us into the field. Um, so I grew up on Long Island, New York as a kid and um, ended up experiencing Hurricane Bob in 1991. So it knocked out our power. I'm like, what is going on outside? You know, I, I originally wanted to be a veterinarian and I would go home and watch the Weather Channel after that hurricane, to, like, just watching Cantori on there with the hur you know, during the season. And I realized I should probably change profession uh, pathways and go into that meteorology uh, just because of how nerdy it is, how nerdy I was just kind of sitting out under an umbrella watching a thunderstorm. So, um, but it, it was Hurricane Bob that really got me into that passion. And that's pretty much why I ended up getting a PhD in tropical meteorology. So, yeah. So, um, I didn't grow up too far from where Mike grew up. I grew up in New Milford, Connecticut. So it's in Litchfield County, Connecticut. And I actually still remember this day very vividly. Uh, I was in first grade and, uh, we were on our, you know, getting ready to pack up and go home, but they didn't let us cause we had uh, a tornado warning. Uh, so uh, I was basically plastered my, you know, my face to the window looking at these ominous clouds and the rain. And I was just like in awe the entire time. Everyone else was scared. I was there up on the window wondering what the heck was going on. And we were actually kept after school for quite some time until the night until things got cleared up. We did have a tornado touchdown um, near um, our school. Um, in Litchfield, uh, Connecticut. So it was a really cool event. And then also the blizzard of 96 was a big high impact uh, weather event that, uh, that had been early January of 96. That was a big event for me. I remember that we had off school and it was, it was, uh, we had like 24 to 30 inches of snow. Um, so it was a really cool event too. And then of course, I'm, I'm sure you hear this a lot, but the movie Twister came out um, <laughs> and that kind of sealed the deal for me uh, after watching that. You know, we 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 were talking all fair, but we've done this show for a while, and it seems like that there's a common denominator there with Twister <laughs> and, and how many uh, how many people is brought into this industry because of the movie. Uh, yep. Like like us, we all have our our other weather day jobs, and we kind of do Carolina Weather Group, you know, for for fun, and that's what you guys do with the fantasy football weather guys. Uh, tell us about what you do in your daytime jobs. I know you guys are both connected in the weather industry uh, as well. Yeah, so I guess I'll start off. And uh, so I, I work currently for the weather company, which is uh, owned by IBM. Um, I, when I started my career there, I, I dabbled with uh, a lot of energy forecasting, pretty much providing weather information to folks who were trading natural gas futures and uh, some of the utilities. Uh, but uh, since, you know, IBM has, has stepped into the picture here, um, they have been transitioned in, into more of a uh, I guess you could say an, analytic, uh, an analyst. Uh, my title is a meteorological um, engineer, essentially, where um, my main goal in the company now is to make sure that our forecast, forecast offers, offerings uh, are the number one skill, most skillful product out there. So um, it's been a lot more of data engineering, software engineering, uh, and playing with Twitter on the side, pretty much. Uh, it's kind of how it's evolved. For, for me, um, uh, I, I'm actually, uh, I teach AP physics um, at a, a school called Lane Tech here in Chicago. Um, so I teach honors in AP physics. And then I also teach at the College of DuPage. I teach some weather and climate courses uh, there. That's very cool. And so, Sean, that's something, um, you know, weather, it seems like a lot of people are interested in. But you're actually teaching these kids. We'll get into fantasy football. But I, <laughs> I, I, find this, I find this really unique. Yeah. What, what is it like teaching kids weather? I mean, that's something I know we all get to go out and do school talks. But you're actually yeah. 
maybe talking to high schoolers, college kids, yep. what's it, what's the field like right now? I mean, is there a lot of interest in weather? Yeah. So I, I have taught at the high school level and the college level. Um, and in, in both of those cases, people are just kind of taking it as a gen ed, right. To take that credit. But one of the things that I found is the application of the content uh, really goes a long way. So if you're going to sit there and just read off some slides, you're going to, they're going to go to sleep, but really getting them involved with the weather, looking at current events, looking at maps. I had students typically do their own map discussions, run their own map discussions. Uh, once we get into forecast mapping and all of, all of that stuff, and, and they really seem to enjoy that. And there are a lot of students that have become avidly interested um, in weather as a result of a few people really interested in climate, some in, in more in synoptics and in mesoscale meteorology. Um, that's been really cool. Um, I, we also do kind of like these little trips, the National Weather Service locally here, we'll do balloon launches um, and they'll kind of go and, and kind of experience that, which is a really cool experience for them. Um, but it's, it's, it's really cool. I mean, really just, it's, it's a really cool science to bring to life because you experience it every day. And students really enjoy that aspect of actually being able to experience the weather, make your own forecast, and, and kind of making it come to life. That's very true. Well, let's let's talk about fantasy football, weather. I told you guys before I, I play fantasy football, but never really put the concept together until I came across your your product. So, uh, tell us how how did this how did you guys become about? I mean, how did uh, how did this uh, website? Uh, blog. I know you guys do a podcast now. How did you guys uh, come about putting the product together? Yeah, we, 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 Sean and I have been talking about fantasy football and, and, and the weather component for a number of years. We, we've kind of gone back and forth and just saying, hey, did you see that snow game? You know, like Roethlisberger threw four interceptions. He was projected to be the number one quarterback of the week. What, what just happened there? Um, it's, it's been, you know, just kind of this informal thing for, for a while. Yeah. And it, it's kind of evolved throughout the year, uh, a couple of years now. Um, you know, we, we, we've been essentially, in a nutshell, um, Sean and I are probably the most competitive people you'd ever meet. And <laughs> we need to be, essentially, we're competitive with everyone else, but also really competitive with each other. So we, yeah. we want to try to find any edge that we can when try, uh, essentially trying to optimize our lineups on a given week. And I think this is kind of how it spawned out, Sean. What, what would you yeah. Um, well. Yeah, it's kind of funny because Mike and I first started listening to this fantasy football podcast and we would be always going back and forth. And there's one thing that they always brought up like, hey, you could become a part of our league of record, meaning you can join their fantasy football league. And these guys are big time. They're all over the place. You know, um, everyone knows them. That's in the fantasy football community, the fantasy footballers. And uh, we were like, hey, I wonder what, what would it take for us to actually be able to be part of their league? Um, and we we're like, well, you know, we we're, we're really in tune with the weather and what's going on week to week. You know, maybe we can trade our experience with, with weather and letting them know what the forecast is and maybe they'll let us be in our league. And so Mike and I were actually kind of just pitching this idea and we're like, wait, like as Mike explained, we were thinking about all these events in which weather uh, has played a major role. And we're like, you know, we, we may have something here. Um, and so uh, last August, essentially we were like, Hey, let's do this. So Mike threw together a website uh, he's like, all right, we're going to meet at this time every week, do a forecast and, you know, make projections for players. We had a, uh, you know, a data set we were able to work with at the time. Um, and then we brought on our friend Colin, who's kind of our producer and behind the scenes guy. Um, and and, yeah, and our host, exactly. And he's been kind of kind of doing stuff on the side. And uh, it just kind of gained momentum during big weather impact games. We would get people on Twitter and asking us for advice and what was going on. And it's kind of built. And now we're at a point where we brought on uh, Nick Schiraldi, um, who also has a PhD in meteorology, and he's working uh, you know, on our quantitative statistical analysis package and user interface on our website um, to, to really kind of nail down those numbers, and as Mike mentioned, to kind of give you the edge. So um, yeah, it's, been, it's just a really cool thing that we kind of were like, hey, you know, let's just try it out, see what happens. And it's kind of getting some momentum over the last year or two. I just want to say one quick thing. Uh, all the fans people, weather guys we just mentioned, we're all University of Albany alumni guys. So. Uh, that's, yes. that's our deep root connection. Well, I'm going to go ahead and uh, share your website. Let's take a look uh, sure. at what you guys have created here. And I mean, this is pretty impressive because it looks like you guys have developed your own modeling within um, for the continental United States, what we call CONUS. And um, so you have U.S. winds and precips primarily for these uh, with the key, of course. And it looks pretty simple to, to understand for the average person, right? I mean, for, for lay terms, this, this will show a forecast. Um, you know, if we take like west wind, if we have games out west, um, you know, I assume there's a little bit of a learning curve here, but who came up with this idea and how, how does it help enhance your, um, 
the experience for fantasy football if folks want to get plugged into the weather to, to maybe determine their outcomes? Yeah, so when we were thinking about these to try to bring up some kind of weather maps here, um, you know, the first thing we thought about is how do we identify where the stadiums are for people to see what type of weather impacts they, they could actually be. So essentially, wherever you see those circles with the, you know, the, the X in the middle, that's essentially the location of a, of a stadium that actually um, is, is predicted is in the upcoming week of, of, um, of, of games. So um, you can see here that, that the Titans there uh, must have a game coming up here. So it, it, those stadiums will actually change um, each week, depending on where the home game is. Um, so if you see a little circle with a dot in the middle, that's actually a, a game where a home game that is usually has like a cover on it. So a dome or some kind of retractable roof. So weather won't be an impact there. But the way that we wanted to really get these maps to be helpful is when there are high like weather impacted events, those circles um, will change. So, so um, it, you, you can see often when like a, an area of heavy precipitation or some stronger winds moves in, um, you'll, you'll see that circle turn to an orange if, um, or, or even a red. Uh, so like the orange would, would represent there's a possibility of some impactful conditions um, from weather if there's a football game taking place during that hour forecast lead you're looking at. If it turns red, it, it means there's a high chance uh, for some impacts. If I were to pick east wind and go forward, yep, you can we, just would go see, forward. we would see yep, there's orange right there. So we're showing, kind of showing the folks out there, if you just hit, you know, hit forward on these buttons, you'll see these impacts in time. And um, you know, I'm yeah. trying to see how far out these go. Do these go out? Yeah, they'll they go all the way to Sunday. Um, I think recently, the most recent model run, 18Z on Sunday. Uh, yeah, we got a, uh, yeah, right there. We got one in Miami. I think they're supposed to get some precipitation and maybe some wind. If you, yeah, and, and so I think it was around 0Z Monday or 18Z Sunday. Uh, for this upcoming week, I think that's the only caution that we have for upcoming weeks. It's going to be a relatively quiet week this week, but oh, yeah, there, there it is right there. So it popped up. Uh, looks like uh, Tuesday evening. So it looks like that timeline got pushed back a little bit. But yeah, I mean that's pretty neat how um, how you how you've integrated uh, weather into a forecast impact for a specific area, and, and it could it could be anything. It could be any anything going on for that area too. So uh, sure. football games in particular, but that's that's pretty neat. Uh, I really like that format. Now tell us a little bit about the fantasy impact table. Yeah, sure. So this is a uh, table that will um, outline each each set of games for the week. Um, and to be honest, there's been so many changes with the schedule here because of all the impacts from COVID. But um, so we, we try to make sure this is up to date. And I think I, I did update this uh, on on Tuesday. Um, so essentially, it'll it'll show out your, your the slate of games here, and and, and it'll be in. Um, you know, chronological order. Um, there are uh, a time and weather impact there. Um, and you can see for the weather, if, there, if it says fair, uh, this is the predicted weather for the time of the game, um, then the impact will show none, right? If you have good conditions, there, there won't be any, any real impacts from weather. Um, but if you do see uh, certain criteria met in the wind or precipitation, that's where essentially you can see things like a caution um, where essentially winds might be uh, and precipitation might be like this marginal um, type of event where there's, there's probably going to be some weather, but it doesn't look like it's going to be, be a, like a, a stunter or a significant impact on, on all the players in the game. Um, but if you do see like the, some criteria, let's say you have winds 20 miles per hour with heavy rain for the duration of the game, that's where you would see an extreme impact. And this, and this, this table would update that. Um, with, I think I, this updates probably twice a day. So this yeah. is a way to kind of come back to the site and look at it. And this kind of gives us a bird's eye view as, as to what to expect. So what we do is we use this as kind of a template and then we'll expand on this during our podcast and we'll let people know what players we're interested in because we do have historical stats for specific players and, and also by position in general. Uh, and we can elaborate on, okay, we have you know, forecast at 18, uh, 25 mile an hour winds, whatever it may be. Well, this player in windy conditions, this is how they perform statistically. Um, so we, we kind of update them on the expectations based on, based on the weather. Uh, we are in the process of updating this, um, hopefully over the next several weeks. Again, our, our buddy Nick Chiraldi is gonna actually uh, customize this by position and also possibly by players. So a lot of the ultimate thing is people want to know how is my fantasy team going to be impacted? That's bottom line, right? So we're going to have fantasy point differentials based on those weather conditions that we're going to be adding to this table, uh, hopefully soon here. And Sean, you were talking a little bit earlier, you guys actually 
uh, doing a lot of, of the analytics and, and numbers. And you're talking about specific players who may see the effects. You know, you're talking about Roethlisberger throwing four INTs in a, in a snowstorm, or, you know, it could be uh, Denver. It's an extremely windy day. So Drew Locke, you know, the wind may affect his, his performance. So how do you guys uh, talk to us a little bit about that, how you're breaking down how it's affecting individual players? Yeah, I can, I, I can lead on this one. So, uh, we have basically archive data that we're able to use that breaks it down basically almost every play for every game going back to 2009. Um, so what we're able to do is look at those fantasy stats. So we have fantasy point projections for half point PPR, full point PPR, standard leagues. And we're able to look at how that player has performed statistically during those weather like events. So, Hey, how is this quarterback performed in 20 to 30 mile an hour wins? okay, well, we see a decrease in fantasy points by four uh, and they throw their, their TD or um, sorry, yeah, their, t- their touchdown and interception ratio has changed X, Y, and Z amount. Um, so, and then we also kind of have another stats package that we'll use based on weather conditions as well. So what we try to do is say, all right, our forecast is this for the weather. Um, let's look at the specific players and you know, the positional players that we're interested in for that game and see if there's actually going to be an impact. Because quite frankly, for some players like an Aaron Rodgers, maybe we don't see as much of an impact for them. So we're not going to be as concerned about that player for other players, like, um, like a Jared Goff or something like that, or Kirk cousins, for example, who played in Seattle this week during rainy games, there, there's an impact there. We've seen statistically. So we really got to kind of decipher. We just, you know, we, we kind of do this by position, but even a little bit more specifically by player when appropriate. That's, that's really awesome. You guys have been doing this. Obviously uh, you started the website last year um, into what well, we're, when we're recording this, it's October 14th. So we're about week five, I think into the season, maybe week six. I can't remember uh, with COVID and all that stuff going on. Uh, but talk about uh, how the fans, how, how have you guys, the outreach, I mean, have you got a lot of positive responses from fantasy football player or fantasy footballers? Uh, you know, how's that went? So I, I think our, our biggest um, interaction with folks right now is on our Twitter, uh, Twitter handle at FF Weather Guys, um, where, um, you know, it, it typically the interaction is most um, prevalent during weeks where there is predictive weather and the folks are aware of that, those impacts, usually when you see like some of the mainstream uh, media or, or sports channels talking about weather impacts. And usually I guess that as you get up into later in the season, you know, as we know, you know, winter storms or um, you know, fall, late fall storms can get more energy from the jet streams. Um, that's where we typically see those, see those larger weather impacts. And I think that that's where the draws start to come in, especially when people are fighting for those playoff positions, right? They want to make sure that they don't make a mistake and people start to get really meticulous with their lineups. Uh, and, and we're speaking more specifically on like these like the, uh, re- redraft leagues, essentially where you have like a draft at the beginning of the season and you have your team for throughout the year. So that's where we've seen uh, the most interaction with regards to our fan base. Yeah. And, and, dur- and during those weeks, I mean, we'll broadcast on our, on our Twitter feed, like, Hey guys, this is what we're forecasting. Here's other impacts. And people will reach out to us. So like, Hey, I'm deciding between playing this player and that player. What do you think? And, and we'll say, Hey, based on what we've seen in these weather conditions, this player has a discrepancy of this, you know, we, we would side with this guy. Um, and so we, we've seen this for a variety of weather events. Most people think of the big rain or snowstorms, but this also applies for, for a high impact uh, wind events as well. We had one week last year that we had four big wind events, whereas 25, 35 mile an hour winds, we saw considerable impacts. Yeah. Um, I mean, so, one of those games was the Kansas City Chiefs and mm. uh, people who were starting Tyreek Hill and Patrick Mahomes, they were you know, really intent on getting some of those deep bombs that just never happened. They, they didn't get any passes over 20 yards. Yeah, uh, you, you literally see these coaches plans. They change their game plans essentially based off of some of these weather conditions. Yeah. when it's bad enough. And even more recently, like Mike and I use this information. We were expecting rain for the Washington game um, in, in, in for the Washington football team. And uh, so we actually steered away from Terry McLaurin and he only had three catches for 26 yards, I believe on, um, on Sunday. So uh, which, which, I mean, it wasn't wet for the entire game, but enough where it may played an impact. So um, Yeah. You mentioned mainstream media. You don't have to drop any names, but do you have you found maybe a few of those uh, folks sliding into the DM saying, "Hey, what's the weather going to be like?" You know, everybody's always asking for fantasy football advice. Who should I start? Who should I sit? Have Have you ever had any uh, 
any messages from folks uh, maybe on the uh, the TV that uh, that's uh, asked for your opinion? Um, so I, I don't think we've had any essential uh, essentially any, any folks reach out for start sit decisions um, regarding that, but we, we have some interaction with um, some of the folks from uh, fancy pros uh, and the fancy footballers and. Um, I think there was a couple of folks from, from Yahoo. It's Yahoo that, that, yeah. that are all involved in the industry that um, will, will kind of interact time to time with us on Twitter. Um, I think last year, um, one of the guys from the fancy footballers, Jason Moore. Jason, reached Jason out. Moore, yep. Yeah, he reached out. And it was a, literally a question about weather. And, you know, he's just like, is there any weather experts out there that would under, understand to know like if you know what the actual forecast is here because you know it was during that time of year where it was really high impactful for the people watching for this particular game and uh, he did reach out to just put a general question a lot of, of our fans cc'd him or, or t- tweeted at him with our handle so we can kind of go in there and get, provide some information hey guys um we touched on this a little bit with talking about individual position players and the impacts on them i was wondering a little bit about the kicking and punting game i mean that seems to be an area of the game that could really be influenced by wind in particular but also precipitation as well um what what kind of, what sense do you guys make of of how important weather is on that aspect of of the football game yeah, that, that's, that, that absolutely is. And a lot of this comes down to another message that we, we speak to is it really matters based on the stadium as well, how the winds are swirling around that stadium, how they're funneled in, um, and also the field type as well. Is this an AstroTurf? Is this a grass field? So those are all, those are all things that, that play in um, to you know, how well a kicker can perform in, in weather conditions. We're in the works right now of gathering kicker data. So I, I don't want to you know, say anything quantitatively um, as far as like from a statistical analysis standpoint, but observationally, we usually talk about games after we see them after the week, and we'll talk about ticker, uh, kickers. And we definitely notice uh, that higher winds going cross field um, or going against the kicker definitely have, uh, definitely have an impact for sure. So guys, on any, on any given sorry, Sunday, uh, you know, we can have a very diverse slate of weather across the U.S. Are there any particular locations uh, across, I mean, anywhere that you guys forecast for that you find particularly challenging or frequently come up as a caution flag? The, the most challenging weather for us is convection. It's just, it's a really, anything in the Florida area, typically in the, the southeastern United States, this is something that we struggle with early season, uh, you know, late summer and early fall when convection is still blooming. Um, and, you know, the high res models will pick up on this stuff. And, you know, we're out 72 hours out. We're like, all right, it's looking like it's going to happen. And we literally have to update people like hourly on Sunday to be like, all right, guys, this is the recent model run. This is what we're expecting. Because, you know, those are mesoscale features that are incredibly hard to predict for a, a three to four hour window of time during a ball game. But at the same time, those could, act, those could be incredibly impactful because you got heavy rains and, and a lot of wind typically associated with those as well. Uh, so I would say those are the ones that we – struggle with the most when there's any type of convection. Yeah, those, those are the events that typically trip our algorithms in our, in our uh, fancy impact table. Um, and some of our maps, you look at those circles and when we change different colors, you'll see certain model runs show the, the impacts and then all because the models are having a hard time resolving oh, the convective yeah. features. Um, and sometimes like they can sneak under the radar. You know, I, I remember there was a game last year in Jacksonville where we had this strong um, northeasterly flow off the ocean that was just bringing these shallow convective cells across the stadium. And it was just like the popcorn variety. And it was just causing, you know, you'd hear the, like, we didn't talk about it much in the podcast that week because we, we, we were, you know, we were, the models didn't see it. And then all of a sudden they'd be raining on and off during the game. And Sean was sending us messages. Do you see this rain? It's going, it's, 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 the announcers are talking about it. We missed this. Like, I'm like, Oh my God. Fun, the joys of, of, of forecasting Florida weather. I can only imagine that your models. Um, is it is it like a blended run? Is it like a high resolution, like her three kilometer going into the NAM three and twelve, then to the GFS out to the seven day? Do you layer it in that manner? That way you get the like the higher resolution or the RAP in the first couple of days. So this is something that we're still working on. Um, and right now, you know, as we were kind of spinning up things here, we've been relying more mainly on on GFS data at first, but we are shifting over to to uh, leverage the um, the, nas- the national weather blend of models from the National Weather Service. Um, so um, we are going to be shifting over to that because um, obviously those are the guys that are paying attention more you know, to each location as you know, 
and, and, and try to be as skillful as possible. Um, and then we can take that information and convert it into the impact or, you know, how that impacts the specific players. So it takes some of the burden off of us in the forecasting world and, and allows us to focus on that impact piece. And then we can also elaborate on that. I mean, because we may use that from, from the National Weather Service, but obviously we have access to the different high resolution models. And again, that's something that we typically expand on um, during our podcast. And there may be some games that don't even come up as a caution on our table necessarily, because they may not meet a certain threshold. But for us, just observationally, we know these are things that we need to monitor. So we'll mention them during um, our, our podcast or on, on Twitter. You're, you're talking about Southeast Conviction. I, I would also imagine maybe uh, Lake Effect Snow, Buffalo, Chicago, Cleveland, Green Bay, all locations that that can see that where one side of town could get six feet and the other side <laughs> could get like two inches, you know? Getting back to your social media outreach and your fans, uh, the football fans in general and how you integrate, how you kind of mesh with everything. Um, how how do, do your fans respond to to your products, right? Because it looks like you do everything kind of for free. You're sort of uh, providing that kind of service. And do you find that a lot of fans are really into what you do and share it out, and and you get a lot of good response and positive feedback out of it? Or, or how is, how does all that work? How do you get your um, how do you how do you know how you're doing overall? <laughs> yeah, no, we we always appreciate the feedback. We'll have some people that'll reach out like, oh, I really wish I knew this, or I really wish you approached it this way, or offered this kind of information. And again, that's kind of how we're working in, in developing our, our web page and our user interface. Um, so most people have been really constructive and just really helpful and really nice, which is not always the case in the weather world as, as we know. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, no, it's been a really good experience. We used to even do a photo contest where people would obviously not the case now, at least for most stadiums, but uh, where you, if you were at a game where there was weather, take a picture for us and, you know, we'll put it on our website or show it during our podcast. And, and people seem to appreciate that as well. Yeah, on, on our website, we do have a, something called a mail, uh, a, a mail bag where some folks can come in and, and write, a, write us a question and we can uh, essentially take that feedback and, and discuss it and respond back. So that's something that's also an option on the website. Yeah, I think it's uh, this right here. So there you, you can put your uh, message in and submit. And then there was also what you talked about, which is weekly weather blog in the photo contest. So um, yeah. it looks like, you know, you give, you give, folks an incentive to sort of uh, be, be more of a part of the website, which I think is great because yeah. you're, you're allowing them to interact with you in, in your domain, which is awesome. So, yeah. Uh, well, talking about the product, uh, we'll start to wrap up here. How can we find you? Uh, what's the social media platform of choice? I don't know if you guys do Facebook. I know you do Twitter, but uh, tell us about social media. I know you guys do plot podcasts, blogs. I even think uh, you might be dabbling into doing some live game updates. Am I correct with that? Yes. Mm. Yeah. So we, we've been moving onto a, uh, the Twitch platform. So if you uh, twitch.tv forward slash FF weather guys, um, that's essentially, we, we have our show usually on Thursday or Fridays. Uh, we try to do it around 8 PM. Um, and then when there are high impact weather events on a Sunday, uh, we'll get up on, on Twitch again and, and have a Sunday show usually around 11 AM. Um, that, that's one source where we've been kind of more interactive with, with folks. Well, guys, thank you for your time. We appreciate it. Thank you guys for watching the Carolina Weather Group. Make sure if you're a fantasy football player, go check out these guys. Uh, fantasy football weather guys, Google them. You can find the Twitter account, website, all of that good info. And make sure that you tune into the, uh, the blog and the podcast, as well as the, uh, the live broadcast there on Twitch on Sunday morning. So until then, we hope you have a great week, and we'll see you next time here on the Carolina Weather Group.